hello all in today's lecture we are going to discuss the functioning of electricity markets with uh, different stages um, of uh, i mean different stages at uh, based on different time horizons uh, here you can see the market is uh, electricity market is divided uh, into capacity markets then day head markets intraday markets primary frequency control secondary frequency control and tertiary frequency control so uh, we will uh, move i mean we will go through this uh, one by one uh, say a buyer is a utility that provides um, power to a city having diversified load demands uh, that is uh, the the total load demand of the city is contributed by shopping malls industries residences etc so the utility feels that he needs a maximum of 120 megawatts of power so uh, he can book this capacity with one or more suppliers in the capacity market through auctions uh, normally the auction prices will include capex and opex uh, which is uh, capital expense and operational expense so based on the capex and opex um, the offers submitted by the gencos are uh, given in the plot in this particular example so hydro has an offer of uh, 40 megawatts in this range 0 to 40 40 megawatts at a cost of 300 uh, in this range okay 0 to 300 range now uh, in 300 to 400 um, range i mean dollars in dollars per megawatts uh, the output range he has uh, offered is 40 to 80 similarly uh, a coal based power plant and a nuclear power plant has also Uh, participated in the uh, offer submission or has participated in the capacity markets now uh, how is the settlement done or how is the uh, market equilibrium found uh, from this uh, these submissions after accepting these submissions so here for 120 megawatts uh, because the buyer has uh, quoted 120 megawatts Uh, so for 120 megawatts nuclear is out right nuclear uh, cannot participate because at this point it is over so in the ascending order of prices if we start uh, filling the power demand then uh, when it reaches the coal based power plant it is already 120 the 120 is filled and at that uh, at that demand um, the corresponding price is 500 so the clearing price here is 500 okay so whoever has uh, quoted uh, prices below 500 in the hydro and gas they will also trade at 500 uh, dollars per megawatt and nuclear cannot participate it it doesn't uh, clear the market the capacity market so whoever is in must be paid at a standard price per megawatt by the utility uh, or the buyer the clearing price is the marginal price of uh, 500 dollars per megawatt uh now hydro as per willingness or based on its internal cost uh, that is based on opex and uh, capex it was supposed to get uh, uh, 14 to 300 because hydro is uh, now um settled for 300 uh, settled for 40 megawatts and its quote was 300 so it was supposed to get 14 uh, to 300 that is 12000 Uh, dollars but he gets uh, uh, 14 to 500 right because the market clearing price now is 500 so he actually gets 20000 so he has a virtual profit of uh, 8000 now uh, i mean based on his willingness uh, with reference to his willingness uh, he has a uh, profit of 8000 or rather a surplus um, of 8000 than what was expected Uh, similarly for gas also gas the gas based uh, unit also uh, there is a surplus uh, 500 is the clearing price and uh, uh, 40 is the 40 megawatts is uh, produced so 40 into 500 uh, then willingness was 40 into no 40 into 500 and willingness was was 40 into 400 so 4000 dollars uh, uh, surplus is there so basically uh, we have in the in the offer segment in the offer segment below market clearing price uh, whoever has quoted uh, they are getting some surplus this is what is a producer surplus mm -hmm. 
and uh, similarly they can be there can be consumer surplus also because the cons uh, different consumers are quoting different prices or uh, different consumers are uh, submitting uh, different bids uh, at last uh, the trade is happening at uh, the market clearing price so uh, if the quoted amount by the buyer is higher than the market clearing price then uh, he is actually getting the uh, getting the power at a lower price so uh, there in, in in that case uh, consumer surplus will uh, come into picture so there can be producer surplus or consumer surplus we will see what is the concept of prosumer uh, the produ producer surplus and uh, uh, consumer surplus um, in economics so you can see here uh, this is a supply curve okay this is the supply curve the your horizontal axis is uh, the units uh, 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 units generated and your vertical axis is uh, dollars per unit this is the uh, rate at which we generate uh, power or rather uh, we submit our offers the suppliers submit uh, their offers now um, the demand curve is also shown so uh, normally the market equilibrium happens at the point e1 where the market clearing price is derived the price is uh, denoted as p1 okay now uh, you see here uh, in this segment that is from this point to e1 until e1 uh, the prices quoted by the suppliers are less than the market clearing price right so uh, basically the difference between this price the quoted price and the market clearing price that will give the producer surplus or the supplier uh, surplus okay so uh, the this surplus is uh, basically the area uh, t plus s plus u okay t plus s plus u so this is the um, producer surplus now what is a consumer surplus here you can see here uh, in uh, in the in the demand curve uh, the the segment in which buyers have quoted an amount uh, greater than the market clearing price this is this segment right that is uh, this segment so in this segment uh, you take the difference between the market clearing price and the quoted price so you will get this area basically this area is r plus v so the area r plus v uh, represents the consumer surplus and the area s plus t plus u represents the producer surplus so that is what uh, we get here consumer surplus and producer surplus s plus t plus u and r plus v now um, when you add both the areas you get the total area here this is what is the social welfare okay the total area is the social welfare so social welfare is r plus v plus s plus t plus u okay r plus v plus r plus v plus s plus t plus u the total area okay now when will this area be maximized naturally uh, obviously it will it will happen at the intersection point right if we take the intersection point then at this intersection point this uh, at this particular price the social welfare will be maximized so this is the basic concept behind uh, the market equilibrium and deriving the market clearing price based on social welfare maximization um, uh, after accepting the offers from the suppliers and um, bids from the um, distribution companies or load serving entities we derive the market clearing price based on social welfare maximization uh, now you see instead of uh, uh, deriving this market clearing price if we have a lower price if we uh, we are forcing the market price at uh, e2 at the point e2 then what will happen to the consumer surplus and uh, the producer surplus in this case if uh, your your market clearing price is this right actually it should be here now uh, this is the market clearing price so you take the uh, difference between the quoted prices and the market clearing prices quoted prices of the suppliers and the market clearing price so you get the uh, area marked in red which is t right so this is the supplier surplus now so when the price is uh, low uh, i mean when the price is uh, reduced what happened is um, uh, the loss is for supplier so uh, uh, 
supplier surplus has reduced but what happened to the consumer surplus uh, the consumer surplus has increased now the consumer surplus is r plus s right it is r plus s so now um, social welfare is maximized at intersection point uh, in the previous case then if say the market price is set at p2 suppose the market clearing price is at p2 now hmm, then what happens uh, producer surplus becomes t producer surplus becomes t right then uh, which is uh, much smaller than the s plus t plus u right s plus t plus u was the this full area now it is reduced right so producer surplus has reduced then consumer surplus becomes r plus s which is bigger than r plus v earlier it was r plus v this this area this was the area when this was the market clearing price now the market clearing price is p2 now the area is r plus s so although this uh, uh, v the the area v is uh, uh, taken out from the consumer surplus it has a bigger area added now which is uh, the area s this rectangle is added now uh, so what happened here is um, basically the the from the supplier surplus uh, there is there is a shift i mean a shift has happened where this rectangle is shifted to the consumer surplus the, the rectangle s is shifted to the consumer surplus and thus the supplier surplus has uh, reduced okay that is what has uh, happened uh, now uh, so what is a, a social welfare now now the social welfare is r plus s plus t right uh, because this is a, a supplier surplus and this is the consumer surplus so r plus s plus t so this this part is now uh, taken out right uh, this this part uh, went out that means this v plus u this area is not there it is negated mm -hmm. so um, what happened here what is the difference now what has happened to the market we'll see what happened rectangle s is transferred from pro producers to consumers right this area is transferred from producers to consumers then a dead weight loss of u plus v this u plus v is lost right so so this is known as the dead weight loss a dead weight loss of u plus v has uh, occurred uh, which implies net reduction in social welfare from trades that are not made uh, what are the trades uh, which are not made that means as per the new clearing price at e2 i mean corresponding to the point e2 which is p2 okay the quantity is only this much right so the the total quantity that is traded is the market clearing quantity which which is uh, here right this much uh, units only mm. so beyond this until this point there is a loss this amount is not at all traded in the market right so this is known as the dead weight loss mm. so um, actually uh, the there is a bias in the market now because consumer surplus is uh, much higher compared to the supplier surplus su supplier surplus and also there is a dead weight loss mm? both uh, have happened okay so this is the uh, concept of market equilibrium now uh, we move on to the um, uh, capacity market capacity market part is over we will move on to the um, day ahead market we'll take a break and go to the next lecture